Where's group C? All right, pass around, please. Whoever's not typing this in this group, open book, find page references, and I'm going to be asking for quotations. It's an imagery-based claim. We'll need direct quoted support. The red candle, Amy Tan uses the imagery of the Huang's house to compare the change between Lindo's feelings about her new lifestyle. Criticism. Yeah. Um, what are they comparing? That's right. We have one compare subject, but not the second. So we have to do one of two things. We either create the second compare subject, or we ditch the verb compare to change to something else. Let's make that decision based upon discussion. Folks, talk to me about where you're going with this, and perhaps even give me your quotation. What do you have? What do you think about doing? And how does she feel? Like confined. Uncomfortable, confined. Could she feel isolated? Can you feel isolated when you're crowded by too many people? I'd say so. I understand where you're going with compare. You want to contrast the initial imagery of the house as being very beautiful and um, wealthy to something that is actually very cramped and uncomfortable. I understand. However, that's part of your development, doesn't need to be part of your claim. Let's make the claim simpler. Use the imagery of the Huang's house to develop um, Lindo's uh, discomfort. I think it's as simple as that. And then what you can do in your development is talk about the initial imagery and say it sets the reader up to think that this is going to be really nice, but then once they realize that it's actually crowded and cramped and noisy and uncomfortable, the devastation is that much stronger. Remember, if you want somebody to feel upset, make them really happy and then make them upset because it's a big gulf between the two. Tragedy Tragedians know that. That's why they use very wealthy characters to destroy in their tragedies. They take people who are really super happy and powerful and then destroy them a lot. If there's a big difference between those two, it makes the devastation that much more powerful. This is what she's doing with imagery. She's presenting a beautiful house, looks so optimistic and positive, and then Lindo walks in and realizes that, oh, guess what? I'm going to be working in the kitchen. And then we have imagery of the kitchen. So your contrast strategy is fine for development. But uh, I think that you just need a simple claim like that. Where is uh, G? And remember, anybody dealing with imagery, and that's C and G right now, but other groups later, that you need to take a look at um, 
specific quotations and understand the connotation of the words. You press the end. Okay. Control A, please. All right. The red candle, Amy Tan, uses the imagery of the golden bracelets and red clothing to convey the value of freedom. So you're almost saying that the imagery is symbolic in nature, correct? That it symbolizes something. Okay, let's condense this a little bit. Um, Amy Tan uses the imagery of. Valuable objects, clothing, clothing and jewelry. I just want to condense that. What you don't want is specific elements like that. You want a category. Um, so Amy Tan uses the image, uh, imagery of um, possessions. Let's go with that. To convey the value of freedom. OK. I think that works. That works just fine. With imagery of possessions, you're opening yourself up for multiple objects because it's plural and it's general. So it's category. So you've got the bracelets. Um, you've got shiny bracelet. That's my art right there. Shiny bracelet. And you've got red cloth. Red clothing. All right. Yay, it's red. It's red. OK. Um, so you open yourself up for multiple objects. You describe those objects using quotations. You pick apart the quotations, analyze them to get to the idea of value. And then if she has these when she is free, then it's the value of freedom. <coughs> 